So I'm saying this not to make any excuses, but to say that it's a very long path. And I think the bar now is set very high uh, for Georgia uh, to, uh, when we get into the next election, to have a peaceful and regularised transfer of, uh, of power, particularly executive power. George has now gone through, um, I think, really a historic series uh, of elections. Elections that have, uh, particularly with the last uh, round of parliamentary elections, that were resolved in the ballot box and not on the street. And George needs to break away uh, from the tendency that we've seen since uh, the Rose Revolution, but also, frankly, in the transition uh, at different uh, points, uh, to uh, really turn to the street and to uh, the gunpoint back in you know, the days of the Civil War with uh, Shevard Nazi, and to make sure that all of the electoral processes go fairly through, uh, through the ballot box. And I think the big test now will be the change of executive power and how that's handled, and also then what happens to the outgoing, uh, outgoing president. We've had some pretty negative uh, precedents set around the region. Ukraine uh, comes most readily uh, to mind currently that have really set back the perceptions um, as well as, uh, to some degree, the, the realities of the democratic uh, transition outside of the country. As you're well aware, uh, the uh, current imprisonment of Yulia Tymoshenko, the former uh, prime minister, um, of um, the former leader of uh, Ukraine, has not been very well received in the United States or in Europe. It's seen as a, a, a step of retribution rather than of, uh, of, of justice, no matter you know, the, 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 all of the, the details of uh, the case, and how Georgia now um, tackles its own uh, executive uh, transition uh, in the next uh, set of elections will be looked at very closely to see if Georgia, as it has done before, is, is basically charting a new path that can be a model and an example, uh, example for others. Well, nobody uh, should be beyond uh, justice. And uh, I think when we look at the case of Yulia Tymoshenko, I mean, there are obviously uh, questions about some of her conduct in the past. However, it's most obvious from the facts of the case that she's being singled out for uh, punitive uh, justice. That if she is uh, sitting in jail, there should be quite a lot of other people who are also sitting alongside her. So it's the singularity of the application in the case of Yulia Tymoshenko, and then the lack of transparency, uh, frankly, in the whole process of, of which you know she was uh, first uh, brought to the court case, and then the whole way that it's conducted. There's just been a ruling by the European courts that have uh, underscored this. So that the system was not uh, transparent to uh, the process, uh, and it was obviously not uh, fairly applied. And we look at, can we look at the case of Mikhail Khodorkovsky in uh, Russia, current uh, cases against Alexei Navalny, and a number of um, other opposition cases, uh, where, again, complete lack of transparency, a completely uh, one-sided application of, uh, of legal process. So, that, I mean, those are really the negative uh, benchmarks, uh, the, the things that we can look at here. So, if there are cases uh, against uh, former officials that are valid cases where there are legal facts uh, that can be um, uh, established and put down, and, the, and if the system is uh, transparent and is fairly applied, I think that this is, uh, these are the key facts. It's all about the process and the way in which uh, things are carried out. The, the real risk uh, in any cases of any government, uh, and this, this holds true across the world, not just in Georgia or Ukraine or in Russia or in anywhere else in uh, the immediate neighbourhood, um, are really whether this uh, is, is being applied as kind of a political revenge or a retribution uh, by uh, a, new, uh, a new regime or a, a, new, a new government. And obviously in the United States there have been also some, uh, and uh, elsewhere in European countries, some very important cases of uh, key government officials who have been indicted uh, for wrongdoing and where you know, things have been laid out in a, in, a transparent, uh, in a transparent way. So I think the important thing is about the process, how transparently it's done, and making sure uh, that there is no uh, sign whatsoever of political retribution. And that's really the test, uh, I think, for Georgia now. Because everybody can be accused of uh, doing something wrong, but then you have to really hold yourself to an extremely high standard, especially when um, there is a changeover uh, of, um, of political power. Well, one of them is the examples that that sets, and this uh, personalised politics uh, also includes Putin, a very sort of personalised application of the law. And uh, you know, no one should be able to stand uh, above uh, the legal system or to be able to kind of apply it as an instrument uh, against others. And I think that's actually uh, one story. Russia um, sets, unfortunately, a rather bad set of precedents uh, right now um, for Georgia and for other uh, countries. 
Um, I think that you know, one, when one looks at the style of leadership of uh, Putin, there are some uh, cautionary tales uh, for any Georgian uh, government. On the one hand, because it is hyper-personalized and is the, the country is run by informal networks rather than institutions. If Georgia wants to differentiate itself and keep going on the path that it's set itself towards being uh, drawing closer to Europe or you know other uh, countries that it uh, has sort of set as its uh, as its benchmarks, then it needs to avoid the, not just the appearance but the reality of personalised politics. The the governance needs to be rooted in the institutions with uh, very much. Um, the application of institutional rules, again, the, the uh, electoral system, to ensure the fairness uh, of, uh, of the system. The other um, area in which this personalised politics is very problematic for Georgia is the way that uh, President Putin approaches international affairs and relationships uh, with neighbouring countries, as well as those further afield. He usually does it through the relationship with the leader. Of course, this has been let's just say, not exactly a, um, a very positive experience uh, for Georgia, given the rather negative uh, relationship that uh, President Putin had with uh, President uh, Mikhail Saakashvili. It's hardly any surprise or any secret uh, to anyone. And this is the real danger of these personalised uh, politics. Uh, Putin also highly personalised the relationship with the United States at various points, with the um, relationship with uh, George Bush. The difficulty now for the United States in uh, moving forward with Putin now as the president and Obama into his second term is that President Obama had not established a personal relationship uh, with Putin. And that becomes now um, a source of, of difficulty for the United States because Obama had actually built up quite a close personal relationship with Dmitry Medvedev, who is clearly now um, being pushed uh, out of uh, the uh, tandem uh, power arrangement uh, with, uh, with Putin. So, I mean, one of the messages uh, for Georgia and the Georgian government is to be very careful of uh, the relationship at the top. Uh, trying to find a more broad-based uh, relationship with Russia is very difficult because the, relation, uh, the political system is so much dependent on, uh, on, on one person. But that um, raises so many of the questions of how the relationship can turn, uh, turn quite negative. So um, the Georgian uh, government, as I said, and the and individual leaders need to be very careful about how they handle uh, that, uh, that relationship uh, with, with President Putin and to find, to find as many points of contact as they possibly can, R really restoring the old ties uh, between Russia and Georgia, the very large Georgian diaspora inside of uh, Russia itself. Many of the people with these close um, cultural and uh, family and also trade and, uh, and, and business ties need to find a solid footing uh, for the relationship that's not just dependent on top-level negotiations and uh, meetings uh, between, the, between the two leaders.